Welcome to this EuroPCR session entitled Mycocatheter based coronary physiology, where and how. My name is Emanuele Barbato, I'm an interventional cardiologist from Italy, and I have the pleasure to share this session with Salvatore Brugaletta from Spain and Carlos Collette from Alst in Belgium. These are our disclosure, um, you can see in the slide. Let's move to the objective of our session. You should attend this session and be with us if you want to understand the current role of microcatheter-based physiology in the diagnostic evaluation of coronary stenosis. If you want to discuss how to spare resources by using physiology tools as workhorse PCI devices. And finally, if you want to learn how to safely and accurately optimize stent implantation by post-PCI microcatheter-based invasive physiology. Let me start asking Salvatore, what is the difference, Salvatore, between traditional invasive guide wire-based physiology and microcatheter-based physiology? Yes, uh, thanks, Emanuele. Uh, if we will look at the slide, the main difference uh, between the two concepts is given uh, by the fact that the guide wire-based physiology uses a pressure sensor, which is placed on the tip of the guide wire, whereas in the microcatheter-based physiology, the pressure sensor is uh, uh, placed on a microcatheter. So whereas in the first case, we cross a coronary lesion with a specific pressure wire. In the second case, we can use our workhorse wire and then we place on it the microcatheter for measuring the pressure. And in this way, the microcatheter based FFR technology may overcome some of the limitation of the pressure wire technology, such as accessibility in challenging anatomy, maintaining wire position, and pressure uh, measurement drift, also uh, obtaining a post-intervention FFR. That is clear, Salvatore, but let me question you guys on this. The field has rapidly evolved over the years, moving from pressure wire-based physiology and the need for adenosine to a physiology with no need of adenosine and more recently, functional angiography, where we even get rid of pressure wire. So it seems like we are stepping back, Carlos, requiring now again a guide wire and microcatheter. What do you think? Thank you, Manuel, for the question. So indeed, we have seen that in the last 10 years, there are new technologies entering the field of physiology. As you mentioned, FFR derived from conventional angiography has been shown to be a promising tool. However, we must realize that the accuracy of this method, the so-called functional angiography, remains lower compared to invasive functional assessment. In other words, invasive functional evaluation remains the gold standard to assess lesion significance of epicardial stenosis. As you also know, invasive functional evaluation can be done using either pressure wires or microcatheters. The coronary pressure wires are somewhat limited in their performance, and this is palpable in patients with challenging anatomies. The advantage, the true advantage of a microcatheter-based technology is the fact that you can use them with the best performing guide wires and still have the asset of performing invasive physiology. Thanks, Carlos. So there is indeed a need for microcatheter-based physiology, I understand nowadays. Next point to clarify is whether microcatheter-based physiology is as reliable as pressure wire-based physiology. Salvatore, are there any data available? Yes, this is an important question, Emanuele. Uh, yes, indeed, we have a couple of studies comparing the FFR obtained by these two different methods. And actually, in the largest one that you can see in this slide, which included uh, almost 170 patients, so there was a good agreement uh, between the two devices. However, the more physiological severe was the lesion as assessed by microcatheter FFR, the greater was the difference between uh, the microcatheter and the pressure Y FFR. The microcatheter may introduce indeed a modest pressure offset, which tends to be greater in the smaller vessel and in longer lesion resulting, therefore, in a lower FFR values uh, as compared to the pressure Y alone. However, so it, it should be noted that in most of these cases, both FFR values were below the ischemic threshold of 0.8, and therefore the observed bias did not impact the clinical decision making. By the way, it is something so to take in mind when using this technology, and it is especially important to note the profile of the distal tip. So to summarize, we can say that microcatheter-based physiology is reliable in intermediate lesions, where we need this uh, physiology assessment the most, um, while it should be best avoided in tight stenosis, if I understand correctly, especially in small vessels where there might be some degree of pressure damping, but this is not the lesion setting where you eventually need to perform invasive physiology, I guess. 
Good, Salvatore. Can you give us a practical example now to, of a case where you would use microcatheter-based physiology? Yes, Emanuele. Uh, on top of those cases that we use are, are ready to have in our clinical practice, and so with a unique moderated lesion, I would like to show two specific scenarios where you may think about uh, the use of the microcatheter-based FFR. In this first case, in the slide, so you see a case of uh, uh, two tandem, two lesions in tandem in the same vessel in the LED. And in this case, you may want to perform a pullback to understand the value of each lesion of the uh, proximal LED of the mid LED. The second case you can see in the next slide, so is a case with a multiple lesion in different vessel. You see here in the right coronary artery in the, le in the left anterior descending artery. And in this case, you may want to evaluate the functional significance of all the lesion by using your workhorse work wire and to be able to get a fast lesion analysis. So in both, uh, the, in both cases, as there are multiple FFR measurements to perform, so microcatheter may be a good option because it allows you to get in and out of each lesion very fast by using your preferred guide wire. Thank you, Salvatore. Very clear case example. We know that to perform proper invasive physiology, a very careful and standardized protocol should be followed. For example, guiding catheter, we need to flush the guiding catheter with saline. We need to equalize the pressure at the pressure sensor with the fluid filled uh, guiding catheter pressure. To Carlos, I would like to ask, are there any tips and tricks that we should apply to have proper microcatheter based physiology, Carlos? Well, the steps to perform an adequate physiological assessment using a microcatheter-based technology are similar to the ones that we use for the normal pressure wires. Likewise, the equalization between the aortic and the coronary pressure is done when the sensor of the microcatheter enters the coronary artery. One of the advantages of the microcatheter is the ability to easily move along the coronary vessel over your workhorse wire. This is useful to understand the location of the pressure drop and also to perform a pullback maneuver without losing pressure wire position. Thanks, Carlos. Salvatore, let's speak about money now. You know, financial is always important. Are there any financial concerns using microcatheter-based physiology? Uh, thanks, uh, Manuele. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, there are no differences in price between the two devices. Uh, consideration about prices may come, for example, from your logistic, from your setting, and also from the anatomic settings you may have to deal with. For example, in a case with a challenging anatomy, you usually manipulate much your pressure wire and you may end up with the damage of the pressure wire very easily. In this uh, specific case, so use of, of uh, only one microcatheter FFR rather than more than one pressure wire may be indeed cost saving. That's fair enough. So we can say, Salvatore, that if properly used, microcatheter-based physiology can help optimizing our resources. Um, let's now move a step forward, Carlos. Our understanding of physiology-guided decision-making is going beyond the simple indication to uh, the kind of revascularization, whether with PCI or cabbage. Physiology, in fact, is uh, being used more and more to guide PCI. Do you think there is also here a role for microcatheter-based physiology? This is a great question, Emanuele. So, in the early era of coronary physiology, we focused on the evaluation of coronary stenosis using mainly one single FFR value at the distal part of the coronary vessel. If we add a pullback maneuver, you add another dimension to your uh, assessment of, of lesion significance. In other words, the evaluation of the pullback curve allows you to determine whether this is a focal diffuse disease, where is the precise location of the functional drop and the extension of the pressure losses. The identification of the pattern of CAD, whether it's focal or diffuse, as you may imagine, has therapeutic and, pro and prognostic implications. In patients with focal CAD, you see in the left side of your screen, PCI is associated with almost a complete restoration of vessel physiology. This is associated with better relief from angina and better prognosis. In contrast, when you have the endotype of diffuse disease, uh, without any clear step up in the curve, PCI, which is a focal therapy, usually does not improve coronary physiology. And please notice that in both cases, the distal FFR value is below 0.8. So this is really an additional information that will help you in your decision-making and strategy. 
That is a tremendously interesting, Carlos. Can you give us practical examples of focal disease and of diffuse disease, please? Sure. Let's look at two cases. If we look at the next slide, you will see a case. Uh, this is an LAD. You will see the angel in the left side of your screen. And the pressure wire is, is in the distal part of the vessel. You will see that the FFR there is 0 0.78. But now let's move to the right side of your screen where you see the pullback curve with a clear step up in the mid section of this, of this LAD. If you perform PCI and we cover this segment of pressure drop, and we see that in the next slide, what happened is you get a very nice angiographic result, and you see that you solve your pressure uh, step up in the mid segment of the vessel, and you end up with an FFR of 0 0.88. So we can say that focal functional disease is a favorable endotype for PCI. But let's see what happens when we go to diffuse disease. And you see there is again an LAD with the same distal FFR, 0 0.78. But this time, when we look at the pullback curve, we see that there is a diffuse pressure drop without any clear step up in the curve. But we do see an anatomical lesion in the mid-segment of the vessel. Let's see what happened when you do PCI in this case. So that's what we did. We covered the mid-lesion, look at the, at, the, at, the, at the angiographic result. But most importantly, now look at the pullback curve, which you indeed gain a little bit, a little bit of shift, but your FFR remains suboptimal, and of course, you did not restore coronary physiology in this case. These are indeed excellent cases, Carlos. Thank you very much. And now let's come back to Salvatore. We have this uh, new kid on the block, Salvatore, the true physio FFR microcatheter. Can you share your thoughts on this device for our colleagues? Yes, Emanuele. Uh, the true physiology FFR microcatheter that you can see here on the slide has some interesting uh, features. The pressure sensor is located in between two radiopaque markers, which are actually easy to locate at the angle when you have to measure uh, the pressure. It has a small profile in order to minimize any problem when uh, you have to use it in a tortoise vessel. And moreover, there is a short distal blind section with a distance from the tip to the sensor of 2.5 millimeters. This uh, microcutter has uh, also good flexibility and pushability, which are important features to take in mind, for example, when you have to deal with a tortoise vessel, or for example, when you want to make a post-PCI measurement uh, where you have to go through a stent uh, recently implanted, which is not especially, uh, not, not, it is not always easy, especially in tortoise uh, vessels. Okay, I think uh, you gave a very nice overview. Um, I thank you very much, guys. Uh, you made this uh, session extremely interesting and lively. Um, it is now time to wrap up and um, find a few points of consensus about what we just discussed. Let me go stepwise. I think we can say that microcatheter based physiology does address a clinical need, um, especially because it provides you reliable information in terms of invasive physiology in intermediate stenosis. It might be cost effective if it is properly used, as we heard from Salvatore, um, along with other tools that are on our shelf. And finally, uh, this enables the interventional cardiologists to choose their preferred PCI guide wire, which is not something obvious, especially if we are dealing with tortuous anatomy. Microcatheter based physiology could facilitate true functional PCI guidance by helping identifying focal stenosis from uh, diffuse disease and by assessing the post-standing hemodynamic results. We learned from Carlos how important it is to safely allow to go in and out the vessel without the risk of compromising the stent struts or even the vessel integrity. So we're really moving to a new era of invasive coronary physiology. I think with this, I'd like to warmly thank my colleagues uh, to have joined us with this session. I would like to thank the PCR crew for making this online session uh, possible. I would like to thank our sponsor, uh, Inside Life Tech, for the unrestricted grant that made this session possible, of course. And a special thank goes to all of you that have taken the time to watch this video. I wish you a very good continuation of Europe PCR 2020 and let's meet together very soon.